Our story begins with algae, the unsung heroes of the planet. In the same way a tree uses sunlight and carbon dioxide to make oxygen, algae perform photosynthesis and contribute to most of the world's oxygen. Just as plants have their own defense systems, algae can defend themselves as well. Less than 2% of algae produce toxins that can harm other life. When one tiny cell is producing toxin, it's really not a big deal. But when those toxin-producing cells accumulate in higher numbers than usual, we call it a harmful algal bloom. Florida red tide is one of these harmful algal blooms caused by a species of algae called Karenia brevis. It produces substances called brevitoxins. These neurotoxic chemicals bind to gateways in nerve cells, threatening imperative biological functions. Brevitoxins can be fatal to fish, manatees, dolphins, sea turtles, and seabirds. Brevitoxins can hitch a ride on sea salt particles in the air and be inhaled by humans on shore. Once inhaled, brevitoxins can irritate the respiratory system and even cause emergency situations for those with conditions like COPD or asthma. People who eat red tide contaminated shellfish can experience gastrointestinal and neurological symptoms. Researchers at Moat are targeting conditions that cause and sustain Florida red tide blooms in order to fully understand them. This will help scientists develop methods to protect public health and our coastal ecosystems. Together with FWC, NOAA, and other partners, Moat scientists use groundbreaking technology to monitor blooms of Florida red tide. Scientists combine enhanced monitoring with innovative strategies to mitigate blooms and their effects through biological, chemical, and physical inhibitors. Moat works to provide stable, long-term research and outreach to help communities grapple with the effects of Florida red tide.